Hi, this is Karen McMillan here, and welcome to this presentation on the generator. Let's get started with the PowerPoint. Awesome. So I invite you to grab a tea. I have some, what is this one? It's like creamy Earl Grey rooibos. So good. Love it. It's from the Bayswater Tea Company in Vancouver. If you ever want to order the best tea in the world, that's where I always order my tea from. I haven't lived in Vancouver for like eight years, but I order my tea from there. All right. Anyway, so here we are. We're talking about the generator today. And we're talking about what type of aura do you have? And, you know, when you think of aura, it's, you know, your energetic presence that extends out from you you know you don't end here at your body you have a an, an ener energetic presence and um yeah it's about two arms lengths away and your or you know out from you two arms lengths and the, your aura type has certain properties so the generator aura is this open and enveloping aura that's attracting life to it and is designed to respond to life. And, and then, you know, we have these other types. I'm not going to go into those right now. But the generator is 70% of the planet, or almost 70%. So, you know, one in, uh, seven in ten people are generators. You're surrounded by generators. And for those of you that are manifesting generators, just so you know, you have a generator aura. There are only four types of auras. And um, if you're a manifesting generator, you still have a generator aura. Um, I myself am a manifesting generator, and I really follow the instructions of the generator aura um, to a T and sort of ignored the manifesting generator part of it. For the first couple years of you know experimenting with this information and then I started to learn about the manifesting part of it so I would encourage you to do the same and just really practice um, being a generator because you have a generator aura as a manifesting generator all right so here is the generator uh, what makes you a generator is that you have this center here, the sacral center, defined, meaning that when you look at your chart, you'll see that that box is colored in, and you have at least one channel coming out of that, um, that center. So the sacral center is this beautiful life force, this motor that has energy available to be used or no energy at all for something. So it's like really black and white. It's like, yes, I have life force for this or eh, no way. I have no energy for that. So it's energy available or not. And as far as the aura goes, it's this open aura, meaning there's really no boundary. You know, generators have this ability to be close with each other right away. There's nothing that's um, a barrier between them. And their aura is actually enveloping whatever they're con connecting with. So um, <laughs> it's funny, as a generator, we can't really feel this enveloping quality. At least I, I can't, but I've really heard that from um, other types like projectors or manifestors that when they experience interacting with a genera generator, they can actually feel the, the generator's aura enveloping them. Um, the generator aura is also attractive. So it's actually drawing to it everything that is for it. And that is why the 
strategy for the generator to move through life without resistance is to wait for things to come to them and then respond. So wait, wait to respond are the magic words that I really hope that you walk away with today. Because, um, you know, for me, learning these words has been absolutely transformational because prior to learning this, I was doing what most of us do, which is pretending to be a manifester. You know, envision what you want, go out and, you know, create your goals and then, and then achieve them. And that's pretty much common wisdom um, in our, you know, society at this point which I think is really unfortunate because it means that most people who are generators have really learned instead of, you know, relaxing and trusting that life is going to bring them exactly what's right for them. Instead, they become very um, yang oriented and going after and chasing and initiating things that they think they want, but that actually don't bring them true satisfaction. And that's really the state of our world is, you know, people busy um, chasing their dreams um, when in fact their dreams are wanting to come to, come to them in the most ease, easeful and elegant way, but they're missing them. So um, a generator is a generator is a generator. So what that means is, you know, whether your chart says that you have, you know, emotional authority or splenic uh, or you would, well, you wouldn't have splenic authority. Um, but if you're a manifesting generator, um, if you have this center defined, the sacral center, you are a generator and you have a generator aura. I love this side. I hope that you just take this in and let this imprint your psyche because here you are, you know, here at the center of your universe and you are literally pulling everything towards you that's right for you. So that means life is actually moving in a direction. Sorry, I'm getting the sun. Let's see if I can move. It's a little better. Life is moving in this direction towards you. Everything that's right for you is moving this way. And what that means is you are actually inherently designed to be a more passive in terms of letting things come to you and then responding to what shows up. More yin oriented. Generators have a ton of energy so they're not necessarily sitting around but they're not meant to initiate things they're meant to just kind of sit back and see what shows up and then when their life force responds to it and says yeah i totally want to do that then to jump in and so you know for me what what this has helped me with in my business especially because I, you know, like many business owners, I have a ton of ideas and I have a ton of visions and they seem really real. They seem like great ideas that I could bring to fruition. However, I wait for something in life to substantiate my suspicion about my direction and indicate to me what to do next rather than me just going after what I think would be my next step. I let life show me. And that has really created a lot more efficiency in my, you know, daily life and business so that I'm not pursuing things that are just going to be frustrating and, and low yield. The sacral center, one of the magical things about it is it's regenerative. So it replenishes itself when the energy is used well. And so a generator who's really using their, this life force that they have, this sacral life force, when they're using it well, they will be fueled even more 
by their own energy. So, you know, have you ever had that experience where um, maybe you don't feel like you're kind of tired or whatever, and then all of a sudden you meet a friend and you maybe are just talking and the conversation is so satisfying and so full of life that by the end of it, you're like, oh my gosh, I have so much energy. I just want to go for a run. And, or, you know, that's the idea of the sacral energy. It's like when you use this energy well, it, it is regenerative. And, you know, you might exhaust yourself and be like, oh my God, I'm done. But that, that feeling of, oh, I'm done is a satisfying experience. It's like, oh, you know, like, I don't, if you ever were, I'm a skier. So I love like at the end of a day of skiing, you know, I'm exhausted. Like I can't even really lift my arm up. I just want to lie on the couch, but I've used my energy well. And that is what it's really about for a generator. A generator that's using their energy well is healthy. They feel full of life and they're actually regenerating themselves. So they're, you know, physically keeping themselves young um, and vibrant, vital. Generators come into the world with the key to their life energy. Nothing needs to be done and you can see it and hear it clearly in children. You know, the, the sacral center is not wishy-washy. It knows what it has energy for or not. So you can see, I love these pictures, like the little boy seeing the ocean and just saying, uh-huh, yes, like I want to run towards that. That is life force responding to life force. So the sacral center will resonate with something. And, you know, it's like um, this part of you inside of you that's resonating with what is outside of you in the world with, with life, life force resonating with life force inside. And the sacral actually speaks in sounds. It actually has a voice and it says, uh-huh, uh-huh. And you'll hear this so much once you start noticing it. People all the time like, hey, do you want cream in your coffee? Mm -hmm. um, hey, would you like to you know, add this page to your website? Mm -mm. Uh -uh. So <laughs> you might hear different like iterations of that sound. But once you start noticing it, you'll really <laughs> notice it. And especially in kids, you know, kids make this sound all the time. Unfortunately, it often gets conditioned out of them, you know, like, hey, use your words. But really, it's a natural way that that sacral center speaks. And basically, it's just saying, uh-huh, I, I resonate. Uh-uh, um, I don't resonate. You know, uh-huh, this is for me. Uh-uh, this isn't for me. So here we have this little girl, like, uh-uh, I don't want to play the piano. And what happens is that and as we grow up, you know, we, we uh, become conditioned to ignore our sacral response and to ignore what we truly have energy for or not. The sacral center is extremely honest about what you actually have energy available for or not. It doesn't lie. And it's only, you know, our head or our mind's agenda that comes in there and, and convinces us, yeah, yeah, you have energy to do, to do this job that you hate. Um, really out of fear, you know, fear of, you know, for security, survival. Um, it could be, you know, social conditioning that you have from your family of origin or, you know, expect, expectations of your spouse that kind of thing that causes us to, you know, to really learn to ignore our sacral center. Yeah, so we, you know, we start this process of learning to ignore our, our life force and our energy early on, you know, as our parents ignore our life force and 
force us to go to bed before we're tired. You know, a generator um, has energy until they don't. And so for them to go to bed when they're not tired isn't healthy. It's better for them to use up all of their energy and go to bed spent. The kind of exception to that is the manifesting generator who um, does need some wind down time in the evening. So some time to just become tired. Like for me, I, in the evenings, I'll start reading a book. And um, oftentimes when I start reading a book, I'm so awake. And then after a short while of reading and then maybe breathing or something, um, I'm like, oh, so tired, you know, but I, I need that little bit of wind down time. So, <laughs> so funny, you know, so those that, as I was sharing, the sacral speaks in, uh-huh, uh-uh, and then unclear, it's like, mm. so I, I remember being like, I don't, I don't think I've ever heard myself make that noise. And then one time a friend of mine was asking me something like, Hey, do you want to do this option? And I was like, uh, and that's that unclear noise. Uh, so yes, it does happen. Sacral life force is regenerating or degenerating. So I love this slide because it, it is really pretty black and white. It's like when you are using your energy well for something that you truly have life force available for, you are in a frequency of regeneration. And it is like you have this magical fairy dust and everything that you're touching grows with life. So when you put your life force towards something, it grows with life. It's alive. It's substantial. It's full of energy and vitality, you know, including your projects. You're, you know, knowing this as a barometer, I can tell who truly has a live marketing and alive offerings because they feel thick with life versus degenerating things that aren't full of life, things that are forced or contrived out of some egoic agenda um, that are, that the person doesn't genuinely have life force available for and yet they're pushing themselves to do it for some reason or another. Those things are actually degenerating to that person, meaning they're, they're destructive to their very health and vitality. They're making them older. So regeneration or degeneration. And you know, those things that don't have life for you, if you are pursuing them and still kind of trying to move forward with them, this, it is like a barren desert. It's like, it's hard to grow anything in a desert, isn't it? So you're basically kind of like pushing water uphill. It's much more of a downstream flow for you to follow what you actually have energy for. Generators gradually lose touch with their sacrals and enter the world of mental decisions, the world of frustrated energy. So um, the signature of a generator who isn't using their energy well is frustration. So notice anytime you're frustrated and those moments when you're frustrated, your next thought can be, oh, in this moment, I'm not using my energy well. <laughs> I wonder what my life force actually could want to do right now. And I encourage you to, 
to stop what you're doing. When you notice you're frustrated, just stop. This is an invitation for you to start being really honest with yourself. And that, you know, that's a really powerful thing that you can decide is I am willing to be 100% honest with myself. And I'm willing to see whatever it is I need to see about how I'm using my energy. Just that willingness will take you far because um, there's a great quote, self-deceit is a tricky thing because it tells you you ain't self-deceived. That's from Jed McKenna. And it's true. An example of this is, you know, prior to learning human design, I really had quite a full schedule doing a lot of one-on-one sales conversations or enrollment, you know, free sessions kind of thing. And I, I just had so many of them for years and it truly wasn't working all that well. Like I wasn't, you know, maybe I was good at it at the very beginning when I actually had true energy for it. But pretty soon I, I didn't do that well. And I was always trying to tweak, you know, how, you know, what do I say? And what do I do differently? Um, and even that whole interaction is just so icky to think about because really it's about me trying to get something. And that trying to get motion is this way. It's moving outwards into the world rather than receiving what is for me. So I was going against that natural way that my aura is actually designed to work mechanically. You know, my aura is designed as a generator to receive, um, you know, to have things that are right for me, including clients moving towards me. The moment I'm moving out to get, I'm basically enforcing my, you know, personal will on what I think I want and what I think is good for me. Uh, and I mean, the bottom line is it didn't actually work and it was extremely frustrating and extremely draining on my life force energy. When I learned this information, I just stopped. I stopped doing one-on-one sales completely. I just made a decision that I wasn't going to do it ever again, (laughs) unless, I mean, I got inspired to, but that hasn't happened yet. And At the time, it was really scary because I thought, oh, my God, I'm going to die. Like, if I stop doing sales this way, I'm going to die. Because, you know, know, it did work occasionally, and I I was making money that way. So my mind was convinced that I wouldn't be okay. And, And yet that wasn't true. So I trusted, I learned in that moment, you know, to trust my sacral, to trust what my life force was telling me. And then life has a chance to actually bring me things that are truly going to be satisfying. When I was really honest with myself, I actually had very little energy for most of the things I was doing in my business. I let go of several programs that I was offering um, because I just truly didn't have energy for them. And, um, you know, so this process, depending on um, where you're at and how much, you know, whether you're forcing yourself to do things that you don't actually have energy for, this could look like letting go of, of things that might scare you at first. And what I would encourage you is to trust, to trust life and learn to trust life and really learn to trust what you, what you truly have energy for. It is so rewarding to do that. It's, it's like you have this incredible life partner, life itself, that wants to give to you exactly what's going to bring you satisfaction. And yet you're running around doing a whole bunch of other stuff with your energy that is a misuse of your life force and that's running you to the ground. And if you were just to listen to yourself um, and be honest, then life can play with you. And 
you know, I'm making some assumptions here. I hope it's okay. I'm speaking in the you form, but that's, you know, my personal experience with this as a generator. And, you know, it's so, it's so powerful. And I don't think I'm alone as a business owner who had been really misusing my energy. I think it's actually so much the norm that to be otherwise is, you know, straying from the herd. And, you know, I totally encourage you to stray from the herd. All right. I really relate to this slide, you know, um, prior to learning human design, I mean, I, I would have probably said that I was happy because I actually had a version of everything that I wanted. You know, I had the help, the, I mean, I didn't have a great house, but I had a, a beautiful place to live and it was filled with all the beautiful furniture and art and things that I had accumulated over years and years. And, you know, a beautiful relationship. I lived in, you know, a beautiful place and I had plenty of free time and I had a thriving business and um, clients and a really powerful network of you know, other, you know, very successful people. And yet, all often, I just wanted to lie on the couch. And it really was that hopelessness of like, wait a second, I, I actually have everything that I thought I wanted and everything that I worked so hard to get. And yet, I'm not satisfied. So now what? Like, if I actually manage to get everything I want and I'm not satisfied, what's the point? You know, how do, how do I become satisfied? And that is really what this is about. It's surrendering is, you know, in my point of view now, it seems very arrogant to me to assume that any of us can possibly know what will bring true satisfaction in our lifetime? How can we know that? It's um, to me, it, it's not our job to know what is good for us and what is right for us. It's our job to be available to what life wants to reveal, and it's our job to surrender to the path that life shows us. And that has been far more magical and exciting. So you can practice this, you know, even just when you're ordering food, you know, since as a generator, you're designed to respond, it does make it easier when there's something to respond to. So sometimes when you're ordering off a menu, it might be easier, like if you see a few options that look like maybe what you want to have your buddy that you're eating with ask you like, hey, can you ask me if I want the you know, the salmon or the chicken supreme. And then, you know, they ask you, do you want the salmon? And you might actually get a response that's different than what you think. <laughs> I experienced this once um, with my friend, Thea Lynn, because uh, I remember asking her, I was like, hey, do you want to um, go out for dinner tonight? And she was like, yeah. I do and then she's like do you want to go out for dinner tonight and I was like no <laughs> I had asked her but it wasn't until she asked me and I was able to respond that it became clear that I didn't want to go so having someone ask you questions is really helpful as a generator because it, it will help you um, know your own response so you can play with that <laughs> It might be enough just to respond to the words on the menu, but it also might be helpful to have someone ask.
And this is kind of a cool thing about being a generator is that you get to know who you are and what you are by witnessing what you actually respond to. An example of that is when I went down to visit my friend in Mexico just for a vacation. Um, first of all, the reason I went to visit was because about seven years earlier, I had seen a picture of my friend dancing on this beach and my whole body responded. You know, I didn't know about the sacral at that time, but it was, oh my gosh, like, what is that place? I have to go there. Um, so finally, you know, she had sent me an email and, I, and there was an invitation to go visit and I took her up on it and I went down and when I got there, my whole sacral, my body, I felt so alive, so happy, um, completely night and day difference between how I felt um, back home in Alberta at the time in the Rocky Mountains in Canada and I ended up... Um, extending my vacation and then eventually moving there. And it was so interesting because as I was there, um, people would ask me, hey, like, where are you from? And I would try to say, I'm from Alberta. But every time I said those words, it felt like I was lying. And then when I got back to Alberta in the mountains, um, the entire place felt dead to me it was like that slide i showed you with the barren um desert compared to the beautiful life force filled forest you know it was like oh my gosh everything here is devoid of life like this place is no longer my place i'm getting you know energetically kicked out of it and at the time i didn't know that i was going to move to mexico so i just started selling my stuff so this is what's possible <laughs> as an example of getting to know who you are. It's like I, I didn't know that my, my being was going to respond to living in Mexico. I didn't know that that was my path. But my sacral showed me that that was my path. And I didn't, I thought that I was going to marry, you know, the man that I was with at that time. And I had been, you know, actively trying to do things to make that happen. Like I had changed my name, you know, I was looking for rings. I had uh, changed my name to his last name. Oh my gosh, talk about pushing to make things happen. Um, you know, we were, I was always looking for real estate for us to buy together. None of that was ever materializing naturally on its own. And when I followed that sacral truth, I realized I actually didn't have life force for that relationship. So um, as a romantic relationship, we're still really good friends, but um, you know, which is, which was really hard at the time because it meant letting go of this entire um, vision that I had for my life, but it was true. So the scary thing is getting back in touch. Like what if I don't like what I see? You know, what if, what if the truth is that I don't want to be in this relationship that I'm in? I'm not sure I want to know my truth. So that's part of what you might come up against in this journey of deconditioning and learning, you know, about what you truly have energy for is um, just being honest with yourself. And, and that's hard and that takes time. Um, and who knows, maybe you're totally aligned and, and that's not going to be a thing for you. Um, but I would say that most of us have become somewhat um, disconnected from, from our life force. So it wouldn't be uncommon for that to happen. So for those of you that have, you know, emotional authority, it'll say it on your chart, um, authority, you know, is emotional. Um, you have kind of like a slightly different way of responding to life. And, you know, 50% of generators will be emotional. So in their definition. So this applies to quite a few people. Um, 
the emotional generator because um, this, you know, the emotional authority means that you have your solar plexus center defined. And the solar plexus is basically emitting an emotional frequency 24 hours a day. And sometimes it's high and sometimes it's low. So one day you might wake up and you feel really good. And then another day you are kind of in a low and you feel maybe melancholy. And on those melancholy days, everything kind of seems overwhelming and difficult in life. And you think, oh, I really can't do that project that I was thinking about doing. And then the next day you wake up and you feel like full of life and joy. And, and you look at that same project you were thinking about the day before. And you're like, oh my gosh, I don't know what I was thinking. I totally am going to move forward with that. That's like a, the smartest idea I've ever had. I've got to go for it. So the key for the emotional generator is not to jump into anything uh, spontaneously, but rather to really take their time and witness how they respond to it day after day in, from different points on their emotional wave until they get this overall sense of clarity. Like, oh, it just really feels clear like this is the right thing to do. Um, this just feels like what's happening next. And that there's a calmness that settles over them about it. So any kind of nervousness is a sign for the emotional generator that they aren't clear yet. And it's not, it's too soon to move forward. So the way I think of it is that the emotions are kind of like the delegate on behalf of the sacral to really speak what you'll truly have energy for over time. So if you feel generally clear, like, you know, generally this just feels like the right direction for me, or generally this feels like a project that I, I really feel like I want to do, then you're then you'll have sacral energy to back it up and if you don't and you you move forward and you're excited and you're like i'm just gonna do this and there's that excited or anxious um feeling then chances are you will be forcing your sacral to do something that um you might not actually have energy for over time and there's, there's more on having emotional authority in the um, emotional authority lecture. <sighs> so I don't like this word rule, but a possibility for you is to experiment um, with having no bedtime and just going to bed when you're tired and you know who knows maybe maybe that won't change at all for you for me i love i've enjoyed experimenting with experimenting with that and letting myself um just follow what i when, what i have energy for um no schedule because generators are really designed to respond to life you know a more natural way of operating would be for you to wake up in the morning and not necessarily know what you're going to do that day but see what happens you know um notice what phone calls you get and um what you know like for example today i mean i didn't think i was going to do this lecture probably for for weeks but i just kind of felt like doing it today it came to mind and then i was like yeah i totally have energy to do that generator lecture today so I'm so I did it and you know in my mind I had a whole other agenda for what I thought I was going to do today but that's not what happened so um you know that may not be realistic for you but I encourage you to try out having more unstructured time where you can just go from one thing to the next and respond to whatever shows up Sleeping alone is simply because when you're in aura contact with others, you end up um, amplifying whatever centers they have defined that you have undefined. And so really when you sleep alone, it's like your one opportunity to just be totally in your own aura for like eight hours and um, 
I personally, I love sleeping alone now that I've uh, tried that for, for years now. I can't, it's hard for me to sleep in someone else's aura because I can feel the influence that they're having on me. So you can play with that or not. Ah, I love this slide. So here this woman is. She doesn't know what's coming. She's just moving one step at a time. And I really love this idea, you know, human design information is not going to transform your life, but learning to respond to life will. It is so simple. It is about just taking it moment by moment and um, letting life show you what's coming by taking the next step of what, you know, responding to the next thing. Um, and yet it's not easy, especially as a, a business owner or if you work in business where, you know, it is all about strategy and planning and setting goals and achieving, um, scheduling, all those things. It's hard to navigate um, living this way. And yet it's really worthwhile to experiment with. So I encourage you to to try it out, step into the unknown. And that's really what it is. It's like not knowing what's coming, not necessarily having a plan. This is our world. We live in a world of generators who are slaves. They're chained to their desk, misusing their energy because of their mental agenda, and completely frustrated in their work. I like to, you know, it sounds severe, but I, I believe it is true that a generator who is misusing their energy is a slave. They're a slave to their mind. They're not free. They're not using their energy well. And why aren't they using their energy well? The life force that a generator has is the same life force that built the pyramids. It's incredible horsepower. And yet, when it's misused, it's slavery. Not having to be in charge of their life, generators find they can trust their body to know what is perfect for them. Energy used correctly in a unique life, the generator signature is satisfaction. So that's as good as it gets for us as generators. We're here to be satisfied, to be like, ah, wow, that was good. <laughs> so it's not about getting rich or famous or, you know, doing something important in the world, although all those things could happen as a part of your life path when you're using your energy well. Um, but really, at the end of the day, it's just about, ah, yeah, that was good. That was satisfying. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed that. And uh, I look forward to hearing what happens when you actually try this out in real life. How much can you relax and trust? Okay, bye.